Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got the new concept light from Brokaw Contest. But before that, we're heading out with Andy Watkins as he tries to make a mixed bag during a roving hunt. Well, I've come to one of my permissions today and um, the nights are starting to get a little bit shorter so I'm a bit pushed for time. I've come after work. I know Matt likes his morning sessions but I'm more of an afternoon person. Um, general thing of today is going to be walking and stalking. So the landowners told me pigeons, squirrels, corvids are on the cards. Pigeons are raiding the, the animal feed. Um, so when the, when the sheep have been fed they're down in on the corn on the sheep feed. Um, same with the corvids really and the squirrels are obviously just a general nuisance stripping the trees of the bark causing a lot of damage to the woodland so they're all on the cards today uh, driving down I've seen a few pigeons flying about nothing nothing um, to write home about but we'll give it a go yeah like I say pushed for light probably got an hour left so I'm gonna gonna crack on Andy is kicking off with a roving approach, moving slowly and quietly and keeping as close to cover as he can as he makes his way around the chute. Well, I've just rounded a corner and there's a pigeon sat up in the tree, beautifully shone up by the sunlight. Um, it's about 35 yards away, so no great stretch. I want to take it from the kneeling position. It's very relaxed at the minute. Might even be a younger wood pigeon. I'll soon see when I look through the scope. Well, pleased with that. <clears throat> Good start to the day. Like I said, not a challenging shot. Sat there beautifully still. Um, very low risk. Let's go and pick him. Nice start there. 35 year old wood pigeon. As you can see, got him with a neck shot so really really nice and humane didn't feel any any suffering or anything like that so that's exactly what i'm after gonna carry on walking around see if we can bag ourselves a few more there's a pigeon just sat up in a tree here i want to go for a headshot he sat nice and still so i'm feeling confident Another pigeon down, smacked straight off the back of the branch. 100% confident he's down cleanly. That pigeon was approximately 20 yards, it was sat absolutely solid. Um, I didn't have a rest, but I felt pretty good, so I went for the headshot. At least knowing with a headshot is if you miss, the pigeon's going to get away unscathed, and if you hit, the pigeon is going down. It's a slightly trickier retrieve for Andy this time. A pair of gloves would probably make life more comfortable as he tries to clamber through the undergrowth. It's very dense in here. Just nearly went flying. 
climbing over the uh, ivy covered tree. The pigeons down here, stone dead. Well, I've just spotted some movement over in the tops of those trees, and I can only assume that it's squirrels. It's the right time of year for squirrels. I can see the berries are out on some of the trees, and um, and the conkers as well. And I would imagine that's what they're foraging for. But there's a lot of commotion going on. There must be four or five squirrels up there, from what I can see. So I'll have a little bit of a stalk over. See if we can get one. Andy is shooting on a farm park where the pests are used to a fair amount of human disturbance, which can be a big help when it comes to creeping in close. I've just entered the woodland. There is quite a few squirrels about. I'm just going to sit tight here until one shows itself. You can hear a few magpies over on the left as well. They might come over possibly. Well, this technique isn't really working, so I'm going to have to stalk deeper into the woods, see if I can creep up on them without them noticing me. The dry leaves are making for crunchy going underfoot. It's not ideal, but Andy eventually manages to creep in close enough for a shot. Well, he hit the ground pretty hard. Pretty sure that was a headshot. There may be one or two more around here. So I'm just going to stick, sit tight, because you never know. Well, I've waited here about 10 minutes and I've had no such luck. I've seen a few hair and off over to the left over the other side of the road. I can shoot there, but it's incredibly dense and I just have no chance of a shot. So I'm just going to go and pick up that one now. There's a pigeon on the telegraph lines just above me. I'm going to stalk around under this tree, see if I can get a clear shot. He's gone down onto the grass. In fact, I might be able to get a shot through that hedge. I'm just going to move along to the left a little bit. The opposite side of the hedge is still on Andy's permission, and it's an enclosed paddock, so it's a safe shot. There's actually a rabbit sat up there as well. Let's see if I can get him to. Oh, that's two in the bag. Pigeon flew off the telegraph wire onto the grass. I thought, you know what, I ain't gonna have this. But then I just found a shot through the through the wire, through the through the hedge. Got a shot off, and then framed perfectly was just this rabbit. Not quite sure. It might be a three quarter. It might be a full grown. All right. That'll make good eating. A pigeon and a rabbit from the same shooting position isn't bad going. And here's our high speed paunch out as Andy field preps his bunny. Weird though it makes sound, I like to inspect the guts. Just make sure they're nice and healthy. Make sure it's a healthy rabbit. I don't really want to be eating something that's diseased. But they look very good. The lungs are a very bright colour. Um, the liver looks good, no spots or speckles on it, um, and the intestines as well look, look fine, so good eater. 
I've just got down nice and low because behind the shed there's a very young woody sat on the edge of a branch. So I'm just going to slowly make my way up. Shot's about 30 yards, so again, well within range. And see if I can drop him. Here he is then, our young Woody. Nice. I've spotted a pigeon in a tree that I've had some pretty good success out of in the past. I know the range here, it's 38 yards, um, it's a little bit deep in the tree the other side but from where I am now I'm pretty sure I can get a pellet in between the two sticks and make a pretty effective shot. And that's one more pigeon in the bag. Now, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the last one today. Uh, definitely the last one on camera, just because we're losing so much light. It's really going quite dark now, especially in the wooded areas. So let's pick up that final bird, have a final tally up. There's some cats behind me, they always follow me when I'm here. So uh, I might treat them to a couple of pigeons. <laughs> Some more great shots from Andy there and another nice mixed bag. And now it's the Airgun Show News. This is the Airgun Show News. Shooting has come under a woeful attack from Liverpool's council, which put forward a motion labelling any form of game shooting barbaric. This comes after the Liverpool Mayor intervened to pressure the city's exhibition centre to cancel the second British shooting show event that was scheduled to debut there in September next year. Basque said it was surprised that such a poorly composed and misinformed motion had passed due diligence to be put forward for a debate. Scotland is consulting on the future of its general licences, and Basque has said the licences need to protect livelihoods, rural economies and the environment. This comes after England suspended its general licences for the control of pest birds for seven weeks earlier this year, and Wales followed by adding new restrictions to its general licences, which came into effect a week ago. Basque Scotland director Colin Shedden said the organisation had made a robust and far-reaching response to ensure shooters' voices were heard. Matt Skelhon is world champion in mixed 10-metre air rifle prone SH-1 after winning gold at the Sydney WSPS World Championships. In a tightly contested final, the Brit held on to take gold by just three tenths of a point ahead of the home favourite Anson Zappelli. Speaking after the win, Skellon said it was tough, cold and tense, but it was my goal to be world champion again and I achieved it. And finally, with voting now open for the Great British Shooting Awards 2020, let's take a closer look at the category Airgun Shooters will be most interested in. It's the Airgun of the Year Award and the five shortlisted guns are the Air Arms S510, the Anschutz 9015FT, the BSA R10 SE, the Walther Rotex RM8 UC and the Virarch HW100BP. You can have your say in who wins. Head to greatbritishshootingawards.com to vote. That was the Egg and Show News. Over the last few years, Brocock has made a real reputation for itself for producing air guns that aren't only accurate, but are also tough and functional. Guns that lend themselves brilliantly to serious pest control. I've got the British gun maker's new concept light on the bench this week. 
It retails for £999 and certainly builds on that reputation for functionality. The Concept Light is a very tactical looking air gun, styled along similar lines to the Brocock Commander. Although it looks fairly minimalistic, the stock actually serves as a pretty good handle. The three fore-end accessory rails give you loads of scope for accessory attachment and they also serve as a fairly comfortable and very grippy support for your leading hand. Moving further back along the stock, I really like the AK pistol grip. It's steep, comfortable, very grippy and sets you up brilliantly for the trigger. Behind that sits the buttstock, which incorporates a rounded cheek support and although it's fairly basic in appearance, it's actually surprisingly comfortable. The buttstock features a very clever push button mechanism which enables you to slide it back and forth. There are five very secure stop positions giving you a variety of length of pull between 34 and 42 centimetres. You can even completely remove the buttstock and replace it with an entirely different one, although I find the standard model to be perfectly good. Depending on how you set the buttstock, overall length can be varied from a compact 91 centimetres to a very compact 83 centimetres. Now the Concept Light's minimalistic styling shaves weight down to about 3.1 kilos unscoped, so it's certainly not a heavy gun to carry around. Balance is pretty good, it feels very natural in the shoulder and shoots well from a variety of different stances. The engineering of Brocock air guns has been excellent since the company began working very closely with Daystate a few years ago. I really can't find fault with the build quality of this air gun and although I'm not the biggest fan of guns that are so military in appearance, I have to say that the flash-free black finish of the metalwork is kind on the eye and should also be very practical in the field. The Concept Light boasts a Lothar Walther barrel that has had a lot of input from the Daystate ART team. Housed inside a sleek full-length shroud, it is threaded to accept a silencer and although the shroud does provide some sound suppression, it still goes off with a bit of a pop so I expect that most hunters will probably want to fit one. There are numerous choices when it comes to scope mounting. Here I've got the very fashionable Picatinny type rail which also incorporates two additional side accessory rails. Now you can swap that for a forward swept intermount with conventional dovetail rails or do away with the intermount completely and attach your scope to the base dovetail rails providing you're using a scope and mounts that give correct eye relief and straddle the magazine. This air gun runs Brocock's trusty 10 shot magazine and also comes supplied with a single shot tray. Cocking, magazine indexing and pellet loading are driven by a side bolt action which features a really nice chunky handle. The mechanism works a treat. It's positive but smooth at the same time and delivers fast follow-up shots without damaging pellets. There's a power adjustment dial positioned just in front of the bolt handle. Now I have said before that I don't really regard this feature as being essential on sub 12 foot pound air guns but I can see it being very handy on high powered models and the Concept Light can churn out power levels of up to 40 foot pounds. What I do like about the power adjustment dial is that it turns with very positive stops. This air gun is fitted with a high quality regulator made by Huma Air. The 177 calibre test gun is producing muzzle energy of 11.3 foot-pounds and it's very consistent. There is no discernible power curve and I recorded a variation of just 7 feet per second over a string of 30 shots and that was with pellets taken straight from the tin. From a full 200 bar fill, this gun returned about 100 shots and you can expect 130 in 2.2. Remaining air pressure is displayed on a gauge at the front of the cylinder, which does mean that you have to look down from the dangerous end to see it. 
When it's time to refill, simply twist the collar at the front of the cylinder to expose the inlet and then plug in with the supplied probe. Like most of the Brococks I've tested of late, the Concept Light has a very good trigger. The blade is a nice clean design and although fairly basic, its swept profile is very comfortable. The two-stage adjustable mechanism also works a treat. On basic factory setting with no adjustment, the fairly short first stage comes to a distinct stop before the second stage breaks cleanly with no creep. I don't usually tend to like safety catches at a position too close to the trigger, but I can't really fault this one. It's a paddle type mechanism, which means you never have to drag your finger directly back towards the trigger to operate it. The gun is safe when it's across to the right, and then you push it across to the left when you're ready to take the shot. So, that's the Brocock Concept Light. It certainly has plenty of innovative features, so let's see how it shapes up on the range. Well, the first thing I'll say is that bolt mechanism is incredibly smooth. Now, very fortunate with the conditions this morning. There's virtually no wind. That's a five shot group at 30 meters. And although it wasn't quite pellet on pellet, it was still a ragged single hole group. Now, this is a pretty accurate air gun. I would certainly have no reservations at all about tackling live quarry with it at this range and probably significantly beyond with a bit of practice. I said at the outset that I'm not the biggest fan of tactically styled air guns, but I can't help but be impressed with the Brocock Concept Light. The level of practicality and adaptability afforded by its design should make it a seriously useful tool for pest control. It's light, compact, tough, and as we've just seen, impressively accurate and that should tick just about every box for anyone who's in the market for an air gun that won't let them down in the field. It looks like the team at Brocock have come up with yet another winner. That's all for this week but as ever we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport. Yeah.